I'll start first with the second image of, of history, and then I'll move on with also seeing how the current government uses it. So the second image of history is almost radically opposed to the first one. It does not necessarily deny that at the very origin of Rwanda, the, the groups that are currently its population may have come from different places. They may have. And frankly, even Hutu presumably may have come actually from other places in Africa as well. Frankly, it's sort of 500 to 1,000 years ago, this is life, populations move. What it does argue, however, is that, um, that the, both the, the pre-colonial kingdoms that existed and the relations between Hutu and Tutsi within those kingdoms were far more equitable, far more balanced and far more fluid and malleable. So the argument then becomes, it wasn't necessarily fixed once and for all who is a Hutu and who is a Tutsi. No, a Hutu who did well in life, essentially who accumulated a bunch of cows, would become a Tutsi over time because it merely was a term to denote wealth, not necessarily a fixed um, sort of racial or fixed ethnic term. And indeed, presumably, while indeed Tutsi were rulers at the top, i.e. the king was of Tutsi descent and the royal court was of Tutsi descent, most other Tutsi, the large majority, just lived side by side with most other Hutu in society, all of them doing the daily business of survival. Um, and indeed, there's some evidence for this in that in Rwanda, indeed, they all do live side by side. Notice also, they all speak the same language, and so on. they have the same culture, and there's actually almost nothing that separates a Hutu from a Tutsi, except presumably that physically, uh, phenotypically, Tutsi are taller, skinnier, and so on. But even that, by the way, can easily be explained away by the mistakes of uh, colonial uh, anthropologists, uh, really not serious anthropologists at all, who basically attributed people to ethnic groups based on what they looked like. And hence, unsurprisingly, now the ethnic groups look in a particular way. Um, and so if that argument is true, um, by the way, then it might even be the colonizer, the Belgians, who actually really changed ethnicity. So when they came around misunderstanding the local politics, assigning radical and, and impermeable boundaries between those groups, which had been until then much more fluid, giving lots of power to the Tutsi only and nobody but Tutsi, and making that category a fixed category, they almost created ethnicity. Sure, Mirandans and Burundians would have known themselves beforehand as Hutu and Tutsi, but what it actually meant to be one was not what it came to mean under colonization. Eh? So the, the current understanding of ethnicity and the current understanding of the politics of ethnicity is a creation basically of maybe the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century.